Most of my favorite fantasy books are stories plagued with great characters that happen in a world that it's rather greedy and therefore here are my favorite grimdark fantasy stories. Now grimdark is such a genre that has had a lot of controversy. The term grimdark was originated from a tagline from Warhammer 40,000 with the phrase in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war. From that point onwards grimdark has been heavily discussed. It's usually characterized as either featuring a broken or dystopian world, really grey characters. It's usually way more realistic and it goes a little bit against that hero versus villain and good versus evil in which everyone is just doing whatever they like. And let's start here with one of my favourite series of all time and at the same time and probably the series that made that change so incredibly deep in fantasy. We have not only a medieval setting in which our characters are incredibly grey but a world that it's it's going towards darkness, towards winter, and it's full of very realistic situations. It is a story that you will terribly feel for your characters, and that is A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. This author is considered a gardener, and I'm not sure if we will be able to see this series to be finished, because he will need to be around 100 years in order to do so, but it's a story that nonetheless it has created a deep mark on me. I read it in 2002 and it blew my mind. Never felt so scared about characters and I was able to understand even the ones that I was not rooting for. And in this blend in which you have a very good action scenes but also incredibly well written and in a moment in history in which we still had these archetype archetypical kind of stories with these emerged the king of greediness of realism and i realized i like that type of story since then although i don't necessarily realize that this was dark grim, grim dark and before we continue let's add the two most popular series that are usually coined as grim dark although there's still a lot of controversy on what and what does it mean and in order to do so i ask my little even spawn tai for help tai tai you've proven to be the star of the channel and knowing that you like dark themes would you mind doing some research meaning which are the most popular recommended stories that i will definitely need to read and perhaps love if i keep loving grim dark would you mind that yeah thank you the first one if the first one, it's a series that is often considered a prime example of grimdark and it's not only because of the morally complex characters but also because it has a really greedy, violent world but it also has a lot of philosophical depth and I know the scope is so amazing that it's what makes a lot of fantasy fans love this story and it's definitely one that I will be reading real, real soon and that is Malazan Book of the Fallen. I'm so scared of this series, not only because of the sheer scope of how massive this is but also also because of the patience you need to have and it has been pitched by a lot of people like okay you need to have this map of characters and although people has come back to me saying it is actually not that difficult you can definitely do it I'm perhaps going to start in book five which I guess it's not your usual starting point but I've heard Gardens of the Moon it's not the best in the series meanwhile book five really portrays the story in a better way meanwhile being fairly standalone it takes place in another continent but still will allow me to see the death of the characters in the high stakes of this world um, so I will start there let me know if this is something that you approve of the next series that came time and time again in Thai's research was one that it's kind of like considered pioneering in some points not only because it takes very mundane characters and follows their stories we're not going to be talking about heroes we're talking about mercenaries doing very morally great decisions and you know evolving in a world that feels very broken and it feels that lacks hope and that is the chronicles of the black company by glenn cook it seems that it's one of those stories that i'm not sure if i will be able to really really enjoy because the idea of having a world that it is so broken and that everything that you see is war or 
although it is really close to why originally it was coined grimdark according to warhammer the idea of these very morally gray characters and in and the political intrigues both intrigues me and scares me at the same time so if you've read it and you want me to read it as well please recommend it me so in the comments another story that deserves to be here and i was discussing with ty if i should be adding it here because i liked it but it definitely was not between my favorites of all time but i acknowledge it might be because it was not on the mood and i will give this story another try it's a story by one of those authors that i guess there's more consensus that he is becoming a king of grimdark and it is doing so in a way that it is creating very deep and very well fleshed out characters that i can say i love and hate at the same time and this is what i liked about this story that his characters were terrible and i loved them and that is the first law by joe robert crombie i've only read the blade itself and i loved glock that the idea of having these characters that are terrible he is an inquisitor he's torturing people for life and i was like yeah glocta you do your thing that messed my brain like hmm am i a good person am i not that is the magic of these kind of stories and i think that the characters were great it just that the plot not a lot of stuff was happening and I found it a little bit lacking but the idea of blending these action scenes with these characters that are greedy and morally grey and the humour that works so well for me it is what is giving me the reasons to keep reading this story and hopefully fell in love with it again. Now we would need to bring the whiteboard here for a second because for the next three books we will have one that it is savage but yet it is funny, another that is dark but it has this classic touches to it and another that it's really political and the magic system it is mind-blowing and let's start with the one that it is funny and savage and it is so weird i read it some time ago and i hated it and i reread it as part of the book club that we have over a patreon and i was like how i missed this this is one of my favorite books of the year if not my favorite book and i really really loved it beginning to end the idea of this world that it is you know in a way it's not bad but the characters are so broken and they are so funny best family found trope that i've read in my life while keeping scenes that are really savage and sad it is a masterpiece and that is the gentleman buster series by scott lynch with the lies of Locke lamora this is the point in which grimdark for me is still like a spectrum and why some books might be discussed here and i'm hoping for those discussions respectively to happen in the comments and yes in here the world it's not broken but yeah our characters are no chasing big quest to save the world but rather they want to be rich and they're going to scam people in order to do so and they're fighting in the different bands and the way that you see them doing so it is outstanding and i fell over heels with this story the narration also in the audiobook it's phenomenal if you want to give other the massive reading a try i love is phenomenal another story that is quickly becoming one of my favorites and i've only read the first book and i know things are about to go even darker and down it's a story that feels classic and modern at the same time i did not read these for ages because i knew there was a lot of war and that you have these evil versus good things happening but you know characters are becoming gray and gray and you cannot escape the feeling of wanting to root for the characters while being scared for them and that is malice so the first book in the faithful and the fallen series by jen by john wayne no jane wayne <laughs> we have these teenagers there's this fate that is coming to them we're so phenomenal but having a world that it's so unraveled on war was fascinating beginning to end and i couldn't escape the charm of wanting to read more i know things will go worse for our characters and i cannot wait to read more position number four a story that i haven't heard before it being labeled as grimdark so i guess it can be discussed if it is it's just a very dark fantasy story but in my mind as it has these gray characters it has a pretty gloomy dark 
world with magic that it is very rotten and also you know our characters our stakes it's everything going down and it is so bad it just it has this feeling of it's not necessarily realistic but the things that happen to our characters are and I fell in love with it I was so consumed by the idea of this elden magic that is rooted on death and people can commune with the dead and we have this boys of the emperor but there's so many more stuff and the idea of these religious and political forces really fighting for the control it was an amazing blend and i think this is a series that if you haven't read you need to definitely now and that is the empire of the wolf with the first one the justice of kings i read this book and although it took me a little bit to understand what was happening because you are following a girl that it's basically following the main perspective here so you are not living it as it is you are following it and that gave these a very refreshing view and I, it allowed me to see how things were going down how decisions were made that I did not necessarily hmm, convey with and I loved how dark and twisted things became I still need to finish book three but I know I'm gonna love it book one and two were part of my favorite last year so I really really recommend and bringing the whiteboard again we will finish with the top three in my opinion and in one hand we will have one that it is very bleak and it has great characters and still I loved it another that it has a broken world and it is savage and the last one is probably the book that I hated and loved the most so it broke my mind in a way let's start in position number three with that one that it is bleak and it has a title that will probably let you know that things are grim and dark and I still found it to be not super gory but savage and realistic and really consuming it reminded me a lot of to Erev Kwang in the sense of we are reading something that feels so intense and it just it leaves you with such intensity of anger and Oh, it has been traditionally published now, although originally it was self-published, and that is Blood of a Bright Haven by M. L. Wang. The idea of having this world in which a blight is happening over there, and we have almost this thunder that it's killing people, like left and right, everyone is dying. And we have these mages that have made this thing in order to try to save people and you see how they're doing it and we will be following the first mage woman and she is not a character that you will want to root for necessarily she is very ambitious she wants to change things and she will do whatever it takes in order to do whatever she thinks will make it it's a story that fascinated me it is surprisingly short in terms of word count for how incredible the story it is i loved the magic System as well it's a hot magic system that feels very much like coding and again not sure if this is properly grim dark but it was a very dark yet refreshing story where we get to see all of these different gray points and i absolutely loved it position number two we have a world that it's consumed and broken one day sun decided to stop shining and as a result creatures emerged and are consuming the land and this is one of those stories that is a masterpiece and a tragedy in itself the first 200 pages are so boring so weird i was not able to understand anything because you go back and forth it is told from the perspective of the main character he is trapped and he's telling his own story very much like name of the wind kuvoth kind of character and i was not super fan of having this narrator but the different pieces fell in you know it made sense and i love this story one of my favorites as well and that is empire of the vampire by jay christoph these vampires are savage the scenes are so consuming and we will have still these points in which it's weirdly humorous i potentially you will challenge this and I and I can agree with that but my humor is really weird so I still found some scenes or some parts in which the main character was saying stuff or relating things that I felt were kind of funny and at the same time it was so emotional and you need to find this quest in which our main character it's in itself bad it I oh, 
fell in love with it, the savagery and the stakes are so high and the world in itself feels truly like a masterpiece. There are some illustrations in the book that also are phenomenal and I cannot wait to read book two. And in position number one here for me, we have this story that once that I finished it, I just, I promise you, I threw the book, made a 30 minute long podcast to one of my best friends telling her how this book should truly end because we were buttering in it even before I started with my booktube channel. And it's a story that has been stuck in my mind ever since not only because it has one of my the most unlikable characters that I've read in my life like I hate this character like it's it's something emotional i hate her but also how the stakes were high the the scenes were so savage but how the idea the story was told it was a masterpiece it draws from chinese history and that is the popular it has a little bit of elemental magic on it which i am always a suck for and we'll see this empire that is consumed by war and it's one of those more war driven and strategic books that i've read in my life it had a little bit of i want to be like um avatar on the airbender in a way and I and I felt time and time again that Suko was one of the main characters here like what if Suko was fully like a bad character that this is what it felt for me and that is why I love this story so much let me know down below which are your darkest grimdark recommendations because I cannot wait